Hey guys, welcome back to Come Again, where all geek culture collides. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you smash that subscribe button and the notification bell next to it so you stay up to date with all our videos. I'm Shannon, and today we're talking about 2014's The Shadow Green Hornet Dark Knights miniseries from Dynamite Entertainment. So stay tuned. In 1939, an unstoppable power will plunge the world into darkness. Unless the crime-fighting icons known as the Shadow, the Green Hornet, and Kato can stop it. When an invention capable of harnessing elemental forces falls into the hands of the maniacal Shuan Khan, the Shadow races against time to prevent the utter destruction of all America's vital industries and financial institutions. To that end, he enlists the Green Hornet, a crusader masquerading as a crime lord, to infiltrate Shiwan's organization of saboteurs. Will the masked heroes prevent Khan's deadly plot to shatter a nation? Find out in the Shadow Green Hornet, Dark Knights. Franklin Delano Roosevelt brings together Britt Reed and Lamont Cranston to battle a devastating new threat to America and the world. It's hinted at several times that President Roosevelt knows each character's alter ego, but doesn't come out and say it. President Roosevelt also mentions how the eyes of the Green Hornet look familiar to another mass crusader he met a long time ago which is a direct reference to the Green Hornet's great uncle, the Lone Ranger. In this miniseries, the Shadow, Green Hornet, and Kato must team up to fight against Adolf Hitler, who is being controlled by Shiwagen Khan, who set himself up as the Japanese ambassador to the United States. Written by Michael Uslan in 2014 with art by Keith Burns and cover art by legendary artist Alex Ross. Here we see the early days of the Shadow as his life before he became Lamont Cranston. We see him as Colonel Kent Allard of the United States Armed Forces. We never see his true face as it's always covered even back then by a red scarf. It's said that mustard gas had eaten away at many soldiers' flesh, and thus hinted that he shared the same fate. It's during this time we see him visiting President Woodrow Wilson. However, he seems to have trouble getting into the White House by the two guards at the gate who say that President Wilson hasn't seen anyone in quite some time. It's then revealed that his wife Edith Wilson has actually been running the nation as president in secret due to her husband's deteriorating health due to a stroke several months before. It's here that we find out where the Shadow's legendary quote of what evil lurks in the heart of men comes from. As Edith says to him, Woodrow always chose to see the good in people. How can the utter evil you describe lurk in the heart of a man and how do we stop it? It's this situation that leads Colonel Kent Allard to the Orient in order to learn to harness his mind to master the power of the Girasol. There are many special cameo appearances, such as Detective Comics number 27, with the first appearance of Batman, who was created because of the Shadow, which the two have shared multiple adventures together as recent as 2017 with DC's Batman the Shadow crossover, which is ongoing right now and later this year in October with Dynamite Entertainment's The Shadow Batman team-up, both of which are written by Steve Orlando, whom John and I both interviewed, and you can find that video on this channel. The link will be in the description below. This was a great story that I could hardly put down. I really enjoyed it, although it's not clear if this takes place in the same continuity as Dynamite's Masks or Masks 2, what is made clear is that it is followed up by 2014's Justice Inc., which makes multiple references to the events of Green Hornet the Shadow Dark Knights. Justice Inc., which we'll be reviewing in another episode, was actually drawn by Giovanni Tempano, 
who will return for Dynamite's The Shadow Batman crossover in October, and was written by Michael Uslan, who also wrote Dark Knights. If you haven't read this story yet, I strongly suggest you pick it up, either at your local comic book shop or on Comixology, where I got my copy. With that being said, as I said before, I'm Shannon for Comic N TV, where all geek culture collides. Make sure you smash that subscribe button, hit the little bell for notifications. Make sure you like and comment on this video, and we'll see you again next time. Take care, guys. Hey guys, Shannon here. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and share these videos with your family and friends, because every time you do, you protect the memory of lesser known heroes from the golden age and beyond.